Yeah. You gotta spend money to make money. Yeah. You don't really need to make money for a while. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm down to not make money for a while as long as our shit's getting out and people fucking listen to it. I'm Santino Jones, Alex Oil. You can call me either. I rap, I play the saxophone, I make beats. I'm uh, Mike Anyanga. Uh, I play in uh, Tropa and Purple Lemurs. Yeah, we're both in the Purple Lemurs. Yeah, we're both in the Purple Lemurs. We play in the same band together. I yeah. play guitar and he plays saxophone. And uh, yeah, and we have other bandmates, Julio, Jake, and Bradley, who are also part of the neighborhood. Robot. Oh my god, Ken. <laughs> Everyone. Every one of them. Dude. Well, good job, Winnie. <laughs> I grew up in a family where I was, it was very church oriented and when I was in Uganda I always sang in choirs, I was always doing plays and stuff like that. When I came to America I figured out guitar and from there started playing guitar in church, singing more. And then after that I just branched out to playing music with people who want to like make music that I like to listen to. I got into performing in kindergarten, I was like in plays. Um, and then I got into like music in the fifth grade when I started the saxophone, and it wasn't like my choice. Like it was like my mom. She was like, "You you have to play an instrument. Like that's that's essential to your growth as a human being." I was like, "Fine." And then I played it and I loved it. And then started listening to hip hop. You know, got into making beats. And at, like, as a freshman, started rapping as a sophomore. The story goes. That's how the story goes. Yeah. I feel like that's a muscle that's still growing. I feel like, and that that will always continue to get stronger the more I do it. At first, I was really insecure about my voice, but then, like, just after a while, I was like, oh, okay, I sound better than I did yesterday. Right. You know. I think it was more the neighborhood needed something different that I hadn't heard before, mm -hmm. and I think when, when the first time we played together. I realized, I was like, this is it, like, this is what people have been wanting to hear, it's a little bit of everything, not to be, like, rude or anything, but, like, punk, like, scene, you know, which is, like, the biggest scene in, like, the neighborhood, so for people to come to the show and listen to something that they've never heard before, it just feels that interest, and, like, wow, that, I've, heard, I've never heard anything like this, but what influenced their music, they started listening to the type of music that we listen to, so they expand their view of music. And Year ago, like two, like year and a half ago, like Mike and I just started hitting open mics at Rupert's, like mm -hmm. once a week. And I was just like, yo, like I had this song that, you know, I think if you turn into a song on an acoustic guitar, it could sound totally different. Mm -hmm. We do covers, we covered like Ultra Light Beam, like The Recipe by Kendrick Lamar, and like we just started converting hip hop into not just beats. Mm -hmm. Mike came to me, I remember one day in fourth grade, he's like, dude, like, he's got this idea for this band. And he was like, can you play the sax? Like, it's a fucking rap, you know, and then like, we shook up and it was like, yeah. that was, that's when the idea right. began to grow. I realized with like a lot of bands who do covers and stuff like that, they always do covers that are kind of like, in a way, rudimentary and basic. You need to be able to like, be versatile and, you know, palatable with people who like, don't listen to this type of music, especially like Anderson Pop. Now a lot of people around here listen to Anderson Pop. For Alabama Shakes, I was in the coffee shop one day and, uh, it, the song was playing through the speakers, and someone was like, is that Purple Lemurs? And I was like, no, this is Alabama Shakes. And they're like, oh, you guys did a cover of this song? Man, I love one. this man. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that, that was amazing, because I've never seen anything like it. And it adds another layer to it. You, know, like, yeah, you don't often hear someone singing while there's a saxophone behind it. That's true. Which is like totally different. You know, mm -hmm. It's usually like one or the other that are like the main, but when they can unite, it creates a third sound that like isn't very normal. My initials spell Ash, right? Um, I'm really inspired by the idea of a phoenix, of something coming out of something that is like destroyed or depleted. I think that's the idea behind Z-Waves, Orz Waves, you know, however you want to pronounce it, that's up to your interpretation. Um, it's something new coming from something old, something dying, something being born. More that coming to where I work, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, it's more personal to me to, to draw. Like I don't really like to share it with a lot of people. It's, it's therapeutic. That was 
the oldest one. Yeah, that was that was definitely the oldest one. The rest of them were made in like the same like six month span, but that one was made back in like high school, <clears throat> and I just thought it matched the vibe, mm -hmm. you know. Each other for like two or three years after that, yeah. and then we met up uh, through. Um, I think it was like I was, I was working on some tracks like my tape before as he waves. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually just making singles. And I was like, yo, Mike, just you want to come record in my yeah, crib? And like, yeah. we made this song called Law Class, like in my closet. And I was like, oh, that was tight. Yeah. And then we went to Broadside and made a song called Fly. Mm -hmm. And that was like, all right, we should continue to work together. Yeah, and that was just pretty much supplemented. Like, we just need to keep working together. Mm -hmm. We're going to get dope shit like Purple Winners. Like, you know? Yeah. So, so. Prescott, I went to school with. Olivia, I worked with. Um, but I just look at it as an opportunity to give these people a platform as well mm -hmm. that they may not have the access to without me as the bridge. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I know you want to express yourself. Here's an opportunity. If you want to take it, mm -hmm. you know, I got take it. Nice you know, work. because like we're all trying to build a broader artist community. Chopper, you know, he, he's, he's going to be like the next Twister, probably, mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's also an engineer, though. He's mm -hmm. also got the whole technical side. Yeah. Um, yeah, he goes to Western. Thing, he? Yeah, he goes to Western. Yeah, shout out to Tonic, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah. It's the homie, for real. Stressful process, but yeah. we got through it and we finished the tape. Yeah, she's, she's dope. Um, yeah, she produced uh, LSD. Or, or on the track it's called Keys mm -hmm. and then she produced Over. It's just her and I who produced the beats on there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, uh, that's the homie, for real. We went, I went to high school with her too. She got a dope project coming up, Nightcrawler, check it out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's, she's dope. I've always just been a big pusher of like being versatile in what you do in your music. You know, working with people that are gonna put you to the next level and experiment with different things, especially playing acoustic shows. Um, we learned that we can take all our songs and every song we've ever done and change it completely in acoustic setting mm -hmm. with less to do more. The guitar isn't as loud, you know, but you can do more because you can like pluck or like you know slide or slow the song down. That's just how I always think about music and try to like push my note of like knowing as much as I know and also working with people who know more than I know. So like in a way that keeps a balance and everything is about balance. Oh man, Mr. West, like Kanye, mm -hmm. first and foremost, like that dude, I think Homecoming was the first song that I memorized and was like, yo, like this is, this is dope. Andre, Three Stacks, most definitely. Kendrick, J. Cole, Chance the Rapper, current big influences. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like Guru, I'm beginning to Guru more like Gangstar. Yeah, old Gangstar shit. slabs. Um, Nas. Yeah, yeah. Nas is the, one of the, Illmatic is probably one of the coldest albums like, one of the coldest. ever made. And this is only like a third of the list. Last night. Uh, yeah, last night at Fire. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you, he, he works there. Yeah, it's, my, it's where I work. It's a, um, youth-led organization, nonprofit uh, that, you know, pushes for social justice in the community. Mm -hmm. And it was an open mic, and it was really, like, yeah, it was, it was real, I it was really raw, it was one of the rawest experiences. Yeah, I think it's one of the best acoustic shows with the environment that I've ever played, just because everything went to the absolute T, even when you, like, you think, because you're behind the instruments and you don't know what these people are thinking. Like, you know if you mess up, but, like, these people don't know. But I, that was the show where I felt like really everything went exactly how I wanted it to and how the whole band wanted it to. Yeah, people have compared me to Lupe mm. pretty frequently. They like, sound a lot like Lupe mm. or um, Saba. Saba, I don't know yeah. Saba, Saba is. Saba. That's what I've heard that as well. Someone told me I sounded like Chance one day too. <laughs> that's a compliment, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. really like, you know, that's, that's a humbling thing to hear. We're yeah. gonna yeah. be online, and we're gonna have a release party for the for uh, our EP that we're dropping. We're dropping right. five songs that we just recorded, and are in the uh, process of finishing. Well, I think we'll have them all done probably by next week, Wednesday, right? We have one more session. Yeah, we week. have one more and session. Then we have to master it, and then we have to master it, and then we'll drop them on Spotify, and then have the release show. 
and then we'll probably try to get physical copies with like the weeks that follow mm -hmm. and some people can just like buy it or they can get on Bandcamp which is like you can just buy the song for like two bucks or something. Bandcamp, mm -hmm. SoundCloud, um, and that's it. Yeah, for sure. And you can purchase it. Um, you can purchase it on Bandcamp if you want. It's You can download it for free, but if you'd like to make a donation, I mean, that's mm -hmm. always appreciated. Uh -huh. That's for donate. Donate to people. Optown Band is donate to people, you know, which is trying to live and do real shit. Yeah. Stay up. Don't let people tell you what the fuck to do with your life because, you know, only you know you at the end of the day. And uh, I don't know if you call if you think you're an individual individual as a person like you know you know yourself better than anybody else. Don't let people tell you shit. Work with people, but also listen. Do not just discard motherfuckers, especially when someone tries to tell you something that could be impactful for your life. A lot of small words can change a person's life forever. Travel. Don't mm -hmm. get trapped in this neighborhood. Exactly. Um, the reason this neighborhood is so dope is because all of these people come from different backgrounds. Absolutely. My man's from Africa. I'm from California. You know, mm -hmm. like. Malaysia, we are all from different Sam. places, and we're all going different places. Absolutely. This is just another step in our journey. Yeah. So shout out to all the nationalities. You know what I'm saying? All the homies, Malaysia, Africa, Zimbabwe. What else is there? Just Earth. Shout out to Earth. Shout out to Earth. Right shout out to Earth, right quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody. <laughs> like everyone's we're different. Yeah, you know, you know, everyone. And yeah. differences make great things. So like you know, just love people for who they are. Don't always assume people are certain certain ways because once you start assuming. You make an ass out of both of you and me. So that's the <laughs> real shit. Man. Like that's the real shit. It's a wrap. It's a wrap.